Good morning, Sheila. And how are you this morning? Wayne, I'm excellent. How are you today? I am doing well. Thank you for asking. And welcome everyone to 27 Minutes with Sheila and Wayne, where we explore the fascinating world of verbs and their impact on our daily lives. Join us each week as we delve into the different ways verbs shape our language and influence our interactions as we attempt to make a positive difference in our world, one <laughs> verb at a time. <laughs> and Sheila, this is episode 101. Congratulations. Congratulations to us. and to us. And I have to also offer, we have now been listened to in 24 countries, Ooh. the latest one being Brazil. How about Thank that? Thank you, Brazilians. Thank you, Brazil. Yes. <laughs> and Sheila, what is our verb for today? Before we jump into today's verb, I want to find out your trivia question. Okay. I do have a trivia question. Okay. And the trivia question is, what city blessed the world with the unforgettable German chocolate cake? Oh, I, <laughs> I'm hungry already. And, and you will answer that at the end of the show. So, I will. And it's a very selfish question because I love German chocolate cake. <laughs> all right. Good to yes. know. And you've given us a hint about what our word today is. Oh, and, and what's that our word? It is to bless. Ah. To bless. And before we go to, into definitions, um, this one was a little bit of a challenge for us because there are many religious connotations for this verb. But one of our three rules about our podcast is that we don't talk about religion. And uh, and why don't we talk about religion? Mm, I don't know. Tell me why. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, that was just one of the rumors we established because it's actually to respect the folks who are listening to our podcast uh, because we try to stay away from divisive topics that could be a distraction from the verbs that we are using to try to make the world a more positive place. Absolutely. So with and that in mind... That. Um, we knew that there were we had to take a different path on this word than the first definitions that come up. So I've got a few little definitions here, and you always have more. Uh -oh. So we'll start with the definitions, um, one of which is to grant happiness, health, or prosperity to someone. Mm. And another one that used to mean, may God's blessing be upon you, but very few people who say it use that these days. It's more to express sympathy or thanks. And often when someone sneezes. Ah, okay. But and you've got more def definitions. Yeah. My definitions found, and, and I went through many um, dictionaries. Mm -hmm. I have to speak well of. Okay. Another one is to approve. Another one is to make successful or happy. Mm -hmm. One said used in phrases like bless him, her, or bless your heart, uh -huh. and bless him or her to express affection, appreciation, or understanding, much mm -hmm. like you said. Mm -hmm. Another one, to provide a person, place, et cetera, with something good or desirable. And I thought, oh, that's kind of nice. Mm -hmm. There was one to give approval to, which we've kind of heard before. Mm -hmm. One is used in speech to express thanks or good wishes. One is to favor or to endow. And the last one I have was to make happy or prosperous. And I thought, huh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Sheila, where can our listeners find you? Oh, thank you, Wayne. I can be reached at the, uh, my, my uh, email address is Zeke and Sheila at yahoo.com. And my email address is Wayne at mindsinking.com. That's M-I-N-D-S-Y-N-C-I-N-G.com. <laughs> so hey. your initial your initial thoughts on bless how, how did it come to be in and wh what were your thoughts I bless is a word that was used an awful lot in my household growing up and I thought I would just start recording all of the times my mom would use it in the course <laughs> of a day for well and and other members of my family so my uh, stepsister who is from North Carolina Becky says in the southern way bless your heart uh -huh. <laughs> which can be a genuine expression of sympathy or a backhanded uh, comment on foolish behavior. <laughs> a very Southern thing. Uh, my mother would often talk about a blessing in disguise, which uh -huh. is w an apparent misfortune that eventually has good results. Okay. Um, not actually, I, I need to say that 
clearly. A blessing in disguise is not the same thing as a blessing in the skies. And ah. oftentimes, <laughs> evidently, people are mixed up by that. Yes. So, um, Or a mixed blessing, which has good and bad aspects. Um, and is also not necessarily a nice thing to say. Uh, when when someone is saying, I've, I have a challenge here, you could say, well, it's a mixed blessing. You know, look for the good side, which can be a conversation ender. So be careful how you use that. Uh And I've got the best advice I ever get got was uh, advice when someone said, when you're opening your home for hospitality, the rule is to bless, not impress. And Mm -hmm. so spend your time on um, making an atmosphere for good conversation and Uh, Not try to say, oh, my home is so beautiful and I'm a wonderful cook because I have already lost that argument. (laughs) (laughs) Not a wonderful cook. (laughs) My my dad used to say, and and I remember this so is is always yesterday. Mm -hmm. He always said when we would go to people's house and they go, oh, the house is messy. He said, I didn't come to see your house. I came to see you. Right. And I, I always remember that. So when people come to my house, hey, you came to see me. You didn't come to see my house. Right, right. So bless not impress. Bless this mess. (laughs) Yeah, and bless this mess. Thank you. I'm writing that down. That's another good one. (laughs) Yes. And my my initial thoughts were much like yours. I struggled Uh with this one. I did. I struggled. I struggled. Um, And then you kind of helped me along and said, you know, Wayne, think of it differently. And and I did. And I I took your challenge and I did. And then it happened. The world opened up to me as <laughs> as it has with every verb we have discussed on this podcast, and a different perspective presented itself. Okay. And I was open to letting that perspective guide me in a fun and rewarding direction. And oh, it let's did, hey. It panned out. It did. So I took, as you well can imagine, I have an article, yes, that I yep. Good. that I read by Dr. Rick Hansen. Mm-hmm. And I also did my two lists of personal and professional. Good. So I will go through Dr. Hansen's um, thoughts. And then at the end of, after doing that, I will give you my random thoughts of personal and professional uses that we tend to articulate the word bless. Great. So I thought that's kind of cool. I, I think so too. Would you like to start? Or would I would you like, like you to start. I'm, I I'm will start. eager to hear what you have to say. Okay. So Rick Hansen said, bless. And the article was, to bless is to see what's tender and beautiful and wish well. Mm. And I thought, Mm -hmm. "Mm, okay, that's going down a path. And let me see where he's going. And he Mm -hmm. says, so wishing well. And he talks about practices. And I thought, wow, how fun, because I talk about practices. Mm -hmm. And he said, he has written in other articles about his five top practices. But he will only be talking about his third practice, which is Mm. bless. Okay. He starts off, my third practice is bless, which means see what's tender and beautiful and wish Mm. well. And Mm. he says, for some, this word has religious connotations, Mm -hmm. but I'm not using it that way. He says, blessing includes compassion, kindness, appreciating, Mm -hmm. honoring, non-harming, warmth, cherishing, and love. And he says, you can see I'm using this word broadly. And I thought, yeah, those are broad strokes. And he says it's because leaning toward pain, it's leaning towards pain rather than away. And I Mm. thought, huh. He says it's helping rather than harming. It's giving rather than withholding. He says it's opening and extending rather than closing and contracting. He says it's wishing well rather than ill much like you have already suggested. He also said it's delighting in rather, is delighting in rather than finding fault. And you can bless others, the world and yourself and any parts of any of these. Mm, that's <laughs> I thought beautiful. how delightful. He has it other is delightful. Thoughts. He has other thoughts. However, I will, I will turn to you. Where, where, you, where are you taking us first? Ah, thank you for asking. There has, there, I always love looking up research, as you know. And uh-huh. in 2003, Emmons and McCullough published research on uh, what they called counting blessings versus burdens. Ooh. And they did an experimental investigation of gratitude and subjective well being in daily life without going into details about how they conducted the, uh, the experiment. The results were. 
A conscious focus on blessings may have emotional and interpersonal benefits both ran, it for, in this case, both random participants and people who have neuromuscular disease. Huh. So that's always encouraging to hear. Yes. And many Absolutely. people have a morning a practice, if you will, of, of counting their blessings when they get up in the morning. Okay. Or a gratitude list, similarly, a gratitude list. So when you're talking about blessings, it's hard not to bring the word gratitude in there as well. I understand. Yes. Yeah. Rick's next point was, he yes. talks about, he says, blessing is obviously good for others and the world, and that's plenty reason to offer it. And he says, as a bonus, it's also good for you. It strengthens gratitude, much like you just said, yeah. and, gla and gladness. It opens your heart, deepens connection, and tends to evoke good treatment from others. And I thought, you know what? I think that's true because I tend to pass on the smile. Mm -hmm. When I smile at someone, they, they typically smile back. If I wave at someone, they typically wave back. I say typically because not always, <laughs> but it's but it's that warm feeling that you get mm -hmm. when you smile and somebody smiles back. It's just kind of like, oh, okay, you know, you know, nice person. Uh, yeah. Just, just just think, just judging a book by its cover, um, if you will, but going deeper with the smile. It says, okay, I've opened the book in the pages and it looks warm. It looks inviting. Mm -hmm. So I, I, like I thought. That. That's kind of cool. He says, now, how do we do that? He says, deliberately feel warmly towards someone while wishing him or her well, that he or she not suffer and be truly happy. Also, be aware of a benevolence towards others looking for good things in them. Mm. Use this to know what the act and the attitude of blessing feels like and to take in the experience of it so that you can call upon it in the future. And I thought... Yes, because I always look for the potential that individuals have. You are very good at that. <laughs> you are very kind with your words, too. <laughs> <laughs> and I do see potential in people, and I offer them, hey, have you tried this or that? Not saying that you can do this, but but offering them, have you tried this or that? And they go, no. And they try, they go, oh, I can do that. And yes, and, and that's the positive vibe because... They don't see the potential in themselves, but you can. And I'm sure we have all done that. I'm sure we all do that. I I, I loved going into schools and talking to kids mm -hmm. because I think sometimes we we let some of the the kids with the skill sets that are there, but they don't know they're there. We let, they fall through the cracks uh. because we 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 haven't reached them. And mm -hmm. I, I tend to think if we can grab them before they fall through those cracks. Mm -hmm. and, help them build their self-efficacy, the word I, I like to use all the time, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it helps build them up and they become more than they thought they ever could be. And I think that's just wonderful. So I, I agree with some of the things that Rick is saying here. How about you? What's next for you? Well, I want to give a few quotes and I have to say it was a challenge when I was looking up quotes to find some that weren't specifically religious oriented, religiously uh -huh. oriented. Now, spiritual is a very different thing. So because we love talking about spiritual components of things, but mm -hmm. the first one I got was a French artist named Camille Pissarro who said, blessed are they who see beautiful things in humble places where other people see nothing. Ah, and that does sound like an artist, doesn't it? It does. A British poet, Alexander Pope, said, never elated when someone's oppressed, never dejected when another one's blessed. Mm. So that's a nice way of looking at other people in the world. Uh, Larry King, an American TV personality, said, I just love asking questions. I love people. It's in my DNA. I'm cursed and blessed. <laughs> and you know, every gift that you have, every trait you have is both a blessing and a curse, depending yes, on how is. you use it. So, <laughs> and then finally, an American scientist who specifically studied insects, E.O. Wilson, <laughs> said, without a trace of irony, I can say I have been blessed with brilliant enemies. I owe them a great debt because they redoubled my energies and drove me in new directions. And that reminds me of what my mom said, which I've already quoted, which is, it's a blessing in disguise. <laughs> yes. Thanks to your mom and Becky here. Yes. Yes. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. 
Rick says, bless people you know, and also bless strangers. And I thought, well, of course. He says, it's powerful to look at someone passing on the street, get a sense of the person, and then wish him or her well. See what happens when you bless people who have really helped you, friends and family, even mm. people who are difficult for you. And I thought, yeah, I, I've tried to be the reluctant kind of thing. You see something happen and you want to help that person and then you think, ah, that's so-and-so. I'm not going to help them. <laughs> and then something just overcomes you. She said, you know, I have to be bigger than this. And you help mm -hmm. them out of the situation mm -hmm. and they, they thank you and you you say thank you and you move on. But this that's exactly what he's saying. He, he's just saying kindness. He says, offer kindness. So mm -hmm. he says, see what it's like to deliberately offer compassion, kindness, prizing, or love. You can also bless parts of yourself, your pain, your darkness, your light, mm -hmm. as well as yourself as a whole. And him saying that reminds me of a person, a friend of mine, um, who told me, she says, hey, Wayne, I want you to challenge yourself. And I said, how so? She says, the next time you see a person with a disability or whatever, and the first thing people look at is that disability, mm -hmm. offer them some kindness. Much like she says, I saw a little girl in a wheelchair the other day, and I said, oh, I like your pretty blue sweater. It's so mm -hmm. pretty. And she said, the little girl just beamed. And mm -hmm. I thought, you, you, you know what? She saw past the wheelchair already and was talking something specific to the little mm -hmm. girl that the little mm -hmm. girl could, could be proud of. And I thought, if we all did that, mm -hmm. <laughs> if we all did something like that, you know, wouldn't, wouldn't that make us better? You know, I'm training my dog who has a natural instinct for this anyway, my dog Zeke, Golden Retriever, in case you were wondering, <laughs> to approach people who live in my area who are using walkers or scooters or wheelchairs, uh, to approach them gently and just say hi. And uh, there's one woman in particular who whose aide says she doesn't talk to any other dog, but she always ah. reaches out to pet Zeke. So. Excellent. Okay. And I feel great <laughs> when that happens. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I, I, my, my next two are my uh, personal and professional lists. So before I go down that road, is there something you'd like to offer us as well? Oh, nope. I want to keep on hearing what you have to say because it's sounding great and I don't want to miss any. Well, okay. These are, these are no longer Rick's. These are mine. Okay. And, and, and this, my personal observations and experiences anyway. I said, personal, first list. We as individuals are blessed in so many ways. Mm -hmm. and, and I know that's true mm -hmm. because we have unique talents. Mm -hmm. We have unique abilities. We have that un individuals have an unforgettable smile. I, you, you just see someone and just, wow, this person has a great smile. And the smile that goes up to the eyes, that includes the eyes, that's a good smile. And they can light up a room. Yes. <laughs> you know, we have the ability, we're blessed. Some individuals are blessed. They can just light up the room. And and I think we we all know one or two of those individuals. Mm -hmm. We are blessed with many opportunities. Mm -hmm. We are blessed with the ability to learn. We are blessed with the ability to touch. The ability to communicate. We are blessed with the ability to belong, which is very important. We are blessed with the ability to give. And I think that is so important that we mm. can give as opposed to receive. We we have mm -hmm. the ability to give. We're blessed with that. We should do that more. We have the ability to love. And I thought, wow, on a personal side, that's to me was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I talked about the professional side as well. I said, again, we are blessed in so many ways, taking a page from the personal side. It says we have the gift gift of gab. You know that person that just at work <laughs> <laughs> just has that gift. You say, "Were you born with that silver spoon in your mouth?" Because <laughs> oh my goodness, <laughs> that was so clear, so exciting. So I'm I'm ready to jump on the train that you're on and go. <laughs> you know that person, right? <laughs> I do know. I'm related to many of those. <laughs> Individuals have the ability to create a vision. And much like your 
your your your quote there, the artist. Mm -hmm. um, I think some people at work are artists, and they put that creative, innovative ability to work with a vision of where this company, where this unit, where this group can go. Mm -hmm. Again, much looking at the potential and offering that, going back to the personal side, the ability to communicate that vision to mm -hmm. others so that they can understand it and go with it. I know that you and Fred had a vision with your business mm -hmm. and starting it. And, and I'm pretty sure that both of you kind of created that vision together mm -hmm. and then offered it to other individuals. And today, well, okay, history has proven that your vision was successful. Very Is that exciting. True? It's it's been a blessing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Some individuals have the ability to lead. Now, many people want to lead, <laughs> and some of them lead badly. <laughs> Just need a little help. Just, right, a little nudge there. Right. But, but there are individuals who have the ability to lead. There are individuals with multiple skill sets. And you're just like, wow, you just, you have so many talents in so many ways. I, and I was looking at, um, I think it was, oh, I was going through a trivia list and I found a person and I said, oh, really? I know somebody like that because Norm, uh, a friend of mine, he says he has the ability, he can play 23 instruments. Wow. Music instruments. And I thought, Wow. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I and I'm assuming he plays them all well because I can pick them up and, you know, yeah, make well, noise. I, I can pick them up. <laughs> That's about all I can do. Not I a still, piano. But, I, yeah. I can't read music at all. But No, okay. me either. Yep. We have ability to put things, events, and people into motion. Some individuals do. You know, those motivators, those influencers, mm -hmm. those individuals yes. who can say, yes, and, and you have the talent, and you have the talent, and you, and you kind of commingle those talents, and you say, okay, go, go, go forth and do <laughs> good things. <laughs> There's individuals have the ability to dream and watch it come into fruition again, much like you and Fred did. Um, so I, you know, those are my personal and professional looks on blessings. Mm -hmm. And I say my last thought with that, whether personal or professional, never take any of these blessings for granted. Right. As they are fragile, priceless, right. yes. and can be lost in a nanosecond right. by breaking one's trust in mm -hmm. so many ways. Mm -hmm. And there we go with pairing another verb with another verb. Mm -hmm. Trust, trust and blessing. Mm -hmm. If you break that trust, boy, everything is gone. And it's hard to get back. It is. And I'm looking at the clock. I am at we are at 23 minutes. So I will now turn it to you to take us out because I think I'm finished. <laughs> well, okay. I have I, a couple of things that Rick says, but I think I'm finished. I've said what I wanted to say. What well, would you like oh, us to hear? When does that ever happen? <laughs> on our podcast, <laughs> that either of us feel that way. Um, I, you know, this is just a little, not a trivia question, but I just wanted to say one of the ways that bless you is used so much in our culture and many others is uh, because it's a knee-jerk response after someone sneezes. And I mm -hmm. looked up and said, "Well, if you want to use an alternative, what are what, what are what are what is recommended?" And in both Canada and the U.S., time and again, this is so curious and interesting for our listeners in Germany. Gesundheit is what's recommended, even though most people do not speak German in our country. Uh -huh. <laughs> that word is used as the second most popular thing after someone sneezes in your presence. So, and if I if I remember my German correctly. Gesund is health. Gesundheit means to your health. Thank you. Yes. Good job. Okay. Okay. Well, I wanted to end with just a couple of examples of good short blessings that I was reading about by Teresa Trumbly Lamson Lamson in on her uh, website, uh, and she did. There's not a date that this was given, but I want to share these uh, with our listeners and then end with you answering our trivia question. Okay. So here's some short blessings. May joy light your day. Hmm. May love fill every corner of your heart. 
May your day be filled with joy and laughter. May you always have hope for a better tomorrow. May your success be inevitable. And may you find strength in every challenge you face. Wow. That, I thought, was perfect. Absolutely. So, please give us the answer to your trivia question, Wayne. Okay, so the trivia question was, what city blessed the world with the unforgettable German chocolate cake? And it was Dallas, Texas. Seriously. Seriously, USA. It says the recipe was created to by Mrs. George Clay, a Dallas resident, who named the cake because it utilized German's sweet chocolate in uh, 1957. Wow. <laughs> 1957. Wow. I, I, I read further and it said back in the 1850s um, was when German's sweet chocolate was made um, by a person. And so Miss Miss Clay here, she turned German's sweet chocolate into a German chocolate cake. Now, <laughs> German's has an apostrophe S on it, much like Ruth's Chris Steakhouse. Ah, okay. And so as it as the story goes, the apostrophe S after Germans somewhere lost itself and mm -hmm. individuals started just saying Germans, German chocolate cake, as opposed to Germans chocolate cake. Uh... <laughs> With the S apostrophe or apostrophe S. So there we go. How about well, thank that? you for that. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yes. And we also definitely appreciate the folks who are listening to us. We thought this was ultimately a good word to start out the new year with. And thank you for being part of our listening audience. And thank you, Brazil. Absolutely. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Have a happy, prosperous, blessed, mm -hmm. and loved and fun new year. Yes. Thank you very much. See you next thank week. You. See you next week, and thank you, Wayne. Thank you, Sheila. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.